There should not be primordial galaxies that are bigger than the Milky Way galaxy that are only half a billion years old. Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. And now the James Webb Space Telescope is identifying objects in the dark ages that by best measurements we have are large, fully developed galaxies. So who ordered that? Nobody expected them. They were not supposed to be there. And now, nobody can explain how they formed. Deep in space, the James Webb Space Telescope detected huge galaxies full of old red stars. These galaxies, revealed in a new study based on Webb's first data, are so distant that they appear as red dots to the telescope's eye. By studying the light they emit, astronomers found out that they were seeing them in the early days of our universe, only 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. But these galaxies don't make sense. Astronomers expected that the first stars would only appear after the universe left the Dark Ages, the first 400 million years when space was a thick fog of hydrogen atoms. These galaxies are nothing like those early stars. They are massive, mature, and diverse. How did they form so fast and so differently? And what do they tell us about how the universe began and evolved? The Big Bang Theory is supposed to explain all this, but it seems to fail in this case. Are there any other theories that can account for these mysterious galaxies? And if so, what would they imply for our understanding of the origin and fate of the universe? Let's uncover the mysteries of these unexpected galaxies in this new episode of Rewriting the Cosmic History. If you look far out into the universe, you're looking way back in time. And as you look back in time, you see less carbon and less oxygen. So we have a direct observation that in the earliest universe, there wasn't any, <laughs> because we can see it. And now we see that there is some, and we know how it was made. Millions of people around the world agree that the world began with the Big Bang. But the claimed scientific agreement on this idea is not nearly as clear-cut as the public thinks it is. Some scientists believe that the Big Bang theory has a lot of flaws, and the latest images from the James Webb Space Telescope have only made these problems worse. This makes it hard for people who are very committed to the Big Bang theory to keep their position unchanged. According to a news report quoting one physicist who does not believe the Big Bang happened, in the flood of technical astronomical papers published online since July 12th, the authors report again and again that the images show surprisingly many galaxies, galaxies that are surprisingly smooth, surprisingly small, and surprisingly old. Lots of surprises, and not necessarily pleasant ones. One paper's title begins with the candid exclamation, Panic. Why do the JWST's images inspire panic among cosmologists? And what theory's predictions are they contradicting? These papers don't actually say. The truth that these papers don't report is that the hypothesis that the JWST's images are blatantly and repeatedly contradicting is the Big Bang hypothesis that the universe began 14 billion years ago in an incredibly hot, dense state and has been expanding ever since. What is going on in that tiny, tiny fraction of a second that is so different from what we know today in our universe. And so that's where the speculation can lie, right? What could have happened other than a Big Bang as we understand it today? Um, could something else have generated the kinds of energies and effects that have led to the way the universe expands today? There's lots of speculation. It was really, really hard to be able to decipher or to pinpoint the physics involved. It's, we're adding extra dimensions, we're adding extra particles, we're adding all kinds of extra crazy ideas, and none of them have yet panned out in a scientifically verifiable way. Since that hypothesis has been defended for decades as unquestionable truth by the vast majority of cosmological theorists, the new data is causing these theorists to panic. Of course, this doesn't mean the Big Bang is dead, or that physicists and astronomers are suddenly becoming creationists. However, many scientists have disputed the interpretation of the data and have proposed alternative solutions to salvage the Big Bang Theory. The idea of challenging the Big Bang Theory is not new. There have been numerous competing theories for some time, even before the James Webb Telescope's latest discoveries. 
While some physicists view the Big Bang as a beginning that arose from nothing, others question if it was just an inflection point, where the universe contracted to nothing before exploding out again, much like a Christmas cracker. These scientists investigate what they call the Big Bounce Theory, and believe that it provides a more comprehensive explanation of the universe's beginning. Both the Big Bang and the Big Bounce theories utilize Hubble's law and other principles to agree that the universe is presently expanding at an accelerating rate. However, the critical distinction between the two theories is what occurred before the expansion, and the differences are reflected in each theory's consequences. But could this theory open new doors to the discovery of even more ancient galaxies than those discovered by James Webb? Uh, the Big Bang was an interesting event, but not the first event in the totality of reality. It could have been the first event that sparked the expansion of our part of space, but it could be that there's a grander realm of space within which we sit as a small part, and that grander realm may have been here for a far longer period of time. It may have experienced its own Big Bangs, maybe a collection of Big Bangs that may extend infinitely far into the past. So it could be that the answer to the question of what happened before the Big Bang is a lot of other Big Bangs or a lot of other quantum events that were taking place in a larger landscape of reality than we have direct access to. While the Big Bang theory posits that the universe began with a massive explosion and has been expanding ever since, the Big Bounce theory suggests that the universe has gone through cycles of expansion and contraction. But does this mean that we can see other galaxies from an old bubble? In this theory, the universe expands for a certain period of time, then contracts back down to a single point, and then begins expanding again in a new cycle. Some proponents of the Big Bounce theory believe that this has only happened once, while others believe that it has been happening over and over again in a cyclical pattern. While the Big Bounce theory is still speculative, some researchers argue that it has some advantages over the Big Bang theory. One of the biggest criticisms of the Big Bang theory is that it relies heavily on the idea of inflation, a period of extremely rapid expansion that occurred just after the Big Bang. However, some cosmologists have argued that inflation is overly contrived and may not be necessary to explain the universe's current state. Another advantage of the Big Bounce theory is that it may be able to explain certain phenomena that the Big Bang theory struggles with. For example, some physicists have suggested that the Big Bang theory is unable to explain the horizon problem, the fact that different parts of the universe appear to have the same temperature, even though they are too far apart to have exchanged heat. In the Big Bounce theory, this problem may be avoided because the universe contracts and then expands again, allowing different regions of space to interact with each other more closely. This could help explain how different parts of the universe ended up with the same temperature. However, the Big Bounce theory also faces significant challenges. For one, it requires some hand-waving to explain certain aspects of the universe's behavior, just like the Big Bang theory does. Additionally, it is currently unknown whether we would be able to observe other galaxies from previous cycles of the universe under the Big Bounce theory. As the theory is still a speculative concept in cosmology, and is not yet confirmed by observational evidence. So what are these mysterious objects that Webb has spotted in the early universe? Are they really galaxies, or are they something entirely different? In fact, some scientists suggest that they may be a sort of star cluster, but others say that they are too large for that. And when you get a spectrum of a galaxy, it's like the fingerprint of all of the chemistry that's going on in there, and also, well, chemical elements that are going on in there, as well as where we would put it in the expansion model of the universe. Because maybe they're just a weird other kind of object and not the kind of object we think it should be. Because if it's a new kind of object, that's also a discovery. These objects are much more massive, more evolved, and more diverse than the galaxies we expected to find in the young universe. They have old red stars that indicate a long history of star formation. They have different shapes and sizes that indicate a variety of formation processes. And they have different colors and compositions that indicate a variety of chemical enrichments. How did these objects form so quickly and so differently from their surroundings? And what do they reveal about how the universe began and evolved? These questions challenge our standard model of the universe, which has been so successful in explaining the universe until now. The standard model can explain many observations of the universe, 
such as the cosmic microwave background radiation, the large-scale structure of galaxies, and the accelerating expansion of the universe. But it cannot explain these mysterious objects that Webb has discovered. Many theories exist to solve this dilemma. For example, one theory proposes that there was an unknown mechanism accelerating star formation, resulting in these massive galaxies. This mechanism could be related to the presence of dark matter, which is a mysterious form of matter that does not interact with light, but affects gravity. Another theory says that black holes grew rapidly, leading to the formation of these and other massive galaxies. These black holes could have attracted gas and dust around them, forming disks that triggered star formation. Or they could have merged with other black holes, releasing gravitational waves that stirred up the interstellar medium. The reason the universe is so different now than it was back then is simply because there was some kind of physics that happened between the moment of the Big Bang and the present day that we still don't yet understand. It is completely true that the universe back then, the density of the universe right around the moment of the Big Bang at the Planck time, we call it, was approximately 10 to the 97 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. But how can we test these theories and find out which one is correct? How can we learn more about these strange objects and their origins? And how can we explore the early universe and its secrets? To do that, we need to use the power of Webb's instruments and observe these objects in more detail. We need to measure their distances, masses, sizes, shapes, colors, and compositions. We need to see how they interact with each other and with their environment. And we need to compare them with other objects in different epochs of the universe. By doing that, we hope to unravel the mystery of these objects and rewrite the cosmic history.